Continuing here, <laughs> finish my sentence. I'm trying to make the point about uh, minimum wage and the purchasing power, okay? Progress dictates your money is supposed to go up in worth, okay? It's as simple as that. To understand capitalism, that's the net effect of true capitalism. It has everything to do with supply and demand and the fact that it gets easier and easier to produce all the things we want and need. Okay, so the why and wherefore, the rhyme and the reason is all logical. And you are capable of understanding that. The, the hard part for us, because of our training, is being honest about these things. And understand what I'm saying about the Labor Department is absolutely true. Okay, they've balkanized and divided America. We should have kept a federal minimum wage. That way, no matter where you lived in America, whatever city you want to move all the time, you could. You could, I want to check this place for a year or two or whatever, okay, anywhere. Okay, the same minimum wage and housing costs would be low, with nominal fee for all our essential human needs would be dirt cheap. Okay, that's the way it should be if we weren't getting robbed, if we weren't enslaved, if we weren't being repressed and oppressed and stolen from, quite frankly, that's theft. That's what it is. You're stealing the labors of the productive class, the working class. Do you understand how that works? I mean, the mo people imperative to the welfare society, we're going to subjugate and marginalize these people. It's so immoral. It's so wrong. It's ungodly. Yes, unethical. And, and everybody that thinks it's okay and, and condones it and justifies it in their sick mind, they rationalize it somehow. So I say evil men are threatened by intelligent men because they want to be dishonest. They want to hide in the shadows. They're threatened by it. That not because physically, but they'll act like, oh, I'm afraid because he talked passionately, and I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Look, I, look. The only time I ever got physically violent it had everything to do with passion of jealousy over my wife. Okay, and even King Solomon, thousands and thousands of years ago, said this happens. I mean, you know, you mess with a guy's wife. It's like even Jim Croce with his song "Bad Bad Leroy Brown." I mean, look, guys, it, you know. You're supposed to be a man's man. And guys know, you know what? There's a lot of fish in the sea. You don't mess with a married woman, okay? Because she could be having a bad hair day and just get flaky, okay? And decide, I, I need to do so. I need to set my husband straight because of this or that or the next, whatever it is, okay? You don't, you don't prey on another man's wife, okay? That, that, that's the one taboo. You are no longer a man's man. You no longer are a right-thinking man. Any guy that would do that, okay, it's just, it's wrong. And, uh, you know, there was a big thing, and, you know, I ended up smacking a guy. He was bigger than me, so, I mean, I, how bad could I feel? I mean, the guy should have known. I, he had a Jesus sticker on his heart, car, for God's sake. I mean, you think, you know, this is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I guess that's what really ticked me off, is that I felt like, you know, I was really... I was really, uh, you know, I was cold-cocked, I guess you might say, metaphorically speaking, so I cold-cocked him literally speaking, but uh, I got five days in uh, a low-security county facility down in Santa Cruz for that. And uh, you know what? I was never ordered to apologize to the guy, but guess what? I called and apologized. And uh, I meant it, too, because God had talked to me, and you know what? I mean, God talked. He just, I don't hear voices in my head, but I mean, the spirit of truth said, you know what? This is not the right approach. And you know, it was true. It was not. And it didn't help at all to win any points with my wife. So I should have taken a different course of action, which wasn't that, you know. It's quite simple. I mean, you get so many choices in life and you take the wrong path and all it takes is one screw up and, you know, it could alter everything. But So I don't recommend it. But anybody that accuses me of being violent, no. The likelihood of that is is unimaginable in my mind. But I'm passionate. Yes, I am. Because I like to impress upon people the gravity of the situation. It's dire. I, I'm scared. I really am. I'm, I, God knows I am scared to death for the masses. Americans, and by extension, the rest of humanity. We are the most influential nation on earth. And people got to start getting it, man. And start fighting like hell. But you're on this hamster wheel. People, so many people are on this hamster wheel that they used to be able to get ahead. You know, one dollar an hour minimum wage in the early '60s. Okay, take care of your whole family, have disposable income, and money to save, money to burn, on a buck an hour. It could be fifty cents an hour today, if we have sound economic policy, sound money, and we made an iota of progress. But that fifty cents would be worth more. 
You see, who cares? Wow, it's the numbers. You see, we're obsessed with numbers instead of the worth. You see what I'm saying here? The buying power. What will it get me? So if you understand what I'm saying, I mean, I know what I'm talking about. I know what should have happened if we had any semblance of true capitalism. And even if it was socialism, any kind of good socialism would have been a bit of the peeps. And it's done nothing but. Okay, all that $50 billion a year goes in the pockets of fat cats out there. Real estate investors, flippers, speculators, investors, landlords, property management companies, a whole lot of special interest groups are, are what they think benefiting. Temporarily, they are, but they're not thinking ahead to the future generations. They, they, they're there to apologize for what they've done. They, well, we stole because our self-interest, I mean, you know, the logic is clear why we did it, the motivation, the incentive. I mean, you know, understand, don't you? So, you know what I mean? I mean, there's no substance to these people. They think they're smart, but really they know they're not. They know they're ungodly. And we got a lot of people. That's who's running the show, creating the policy we're all forced to live under. On this hamster wheel, you used to be able to get ahead. All right, middle class. I reached it finally. My wife and I got a starter home. And from there, we got a better home. And we're saving money and we're doing good and putting the kids through college and everything else, right? That's what we could have all had, all of us in America, and by extension, the rest of the world. But instead, we've gone the opposite direction, and it's wrong, and the Labor Department's been responsible for allowing this to happen. Because if every year they put their foot down, they said, no, well, we're just doing the math here, folks, and, and yes, I'm sorry, but minimum wage has to go up X amount. Explain to the public why, do the math with the public, educate the public. Instead of doing that, no. For over half a century, they haven't done that. You understand how, how it's divided us, balkanized us in America, and created untold misery, unnecessary human suffering? It's stealing people's wealth. It's stealing their sense of freedom. It's stealing their sense of security. So now they're on this hamster wheel, and gradually it's just gotten harder and harder to gain any traction. And then it would became freewheeling, and people could still handle that. But now it's going, you're going backwards. You're on the hamster wheel, but all you're doing is just you're losing your strength. So that's why I say, I mean, the sooner you admit it's a hopeless situation financially, the better off you are. And what does that mean? What do you do? You turn to God for advice. And the best advice I could tell you is do your best to keep your cost of living down. And even if you say, well, I've got, I've got a good job and I can, I can afford it. I can afford that $50 a month increase. But do you care about your fellow human being? Knowing that 50 bucks might represent the straw that broke the camel's back. Do you care about him? And if not, when you stand before God, Jesus Christ, on Judgment Day, is he going to tell you, well, nothing personal here, just business. And I was looking after my own best interests. And, hey, I had the money. I couldn't worry about, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there and how, you know, me paying that extra $50 rent increase affects him. I can't worry about that. He's homeless. He's weak. I mean, you know, social Darwinism, I guess, is the rule of the day. Uh, social Darwinism on mutant steroids, and it keeps getting more and more acute. I mean, you understand they're murdering us right under our noses, making people's lives hopeless. They're putting bullets in their brain and just dropping out and going living under bridges and God knows what. I mean, we, if we don't care about each other, God, we cannot expect God to care about us. You've got to care about your fellow man and the least of men. Represent Jesus. He himself said this. You got to get it. You got to really turn to God. You want to be super duper intelligent? Turn to God, man. He'll tell you right from wrong. He'll make it all very clear. He'll say, you know what? Think this way. Have this opinion. Know this much and be able to stand before anybody and speak truth to power in a courageous manner, not as a coward. And say, if it costs my life, if this person hates me so much they want to kill me, so be it. But I've got to do what I've got to. I've got to fight the good fight for my fellow human being. I want to go to a better world. Care, man. You better care. I'm telling you, you understand? Well, I'm trying to cover a lot of bases here. And I, I really care about people. I really do. I want them to get it and be empowered and, and speak out for others. Even if it's not affecting you directly, okay? It's affecting your fellow human being, whom you should look at as your own son or daughter, or better yet, your own child, the way God looks at us. We're made his image and likeness. So let's look at each other in that right likeness. Care, because you can't have a more tender heart toward anybody but your own kids, whether it's biological, step, 
foster, adopted, or otherwise. Okay? I don't feel any... I got two daughters. If I found out that I wasn't biologically related to either one of them at this point in time, they're in their 30s, well-adjusted, beautiful women. I couldn't love them any less. I wiped their little behinds. From day one, I was there for them. I'm their dad. But uh, you know what? We've got to care, my friends. You've got to care. You've got to speak out. you got to do something. That's the best I can do is tell people, do your best to keep your cost of living down. Look for a way to weasel out of it. High prices, man. Do something to help. That helps. Okay? I mean, you've got to do it. You've got to care about that minimum wage worker, that homeless person, just like it was yourself. Or your son or daughter. Or your own child. Because a lot of people don't care much about themselves. People kill themselves. People don't care about conscience. They figure they can slice a piece of it off at will and pick and choose what parts of their conscience to keep. You can't do that. It's a fail safe. It's a default position God put in you. He wants you to be a good, decent, upright child that can look themselves in the mirror and sleep at night with his blessings and sanctification. He wants you to be found worthy and deserving to go to a better world. And we can't go that alone. We must care about other people. And our own very own happiness is entangled, inextricably so, with each other's welfare. We cannot find true happiness and not care about the happiness of our fellow human beings. We can never attain true absolute happiness or freedom or a real sense of security without caring about those same things for others. We must want others to have the things we want for ourselves and our families and our children. So to sum this up, we got the Labor Department in cahoots, in collusion with the money printing class, lap dogs for them, and then the top politicians. You understand, I mean, a three-ring circus, a, a cord of three I don't forget how the passage from Scripture goes, but it talks about these three strands making up a cord, and it's tough. This is a juggernaut of pure, unmitigated, undiluted evil in our faces. They've taken over. They've been doing it a long time. They've cooked us like the frogs in the pot of water. We're done. We're cooked, my friends. But still, they keep pressing forward. They keep trying to get, keep squeezing a little more out of the wealth imbalance, keep creating a little more poverty. And all these so-called capitalists, they're not talking about the real issues like I am and telling you, look, they're colluding, the socialists and capitalists, that they're just words or terms unless we have a meeting in the minds to define these terms so we can have a productive discussion. They mean nothing. Socialists and capitalists and liberals and conservatives and Democrats and Republicans, it means nothing when they're colluding against us, against the best interests of the American people at large and by extension all the people of planet Earth. Biblical level evil. No equivocation. It's a fact we need God's help. We need the literal finger of God to step in. And all of us step up to the plate and be willing to die for the cause of fighting the good fight and be from being found worthy and deserving of going to a better world because we're in a lot of trouble. So we got those three entities. You understand how they're working against the people at large and they've got so many people convinced that it's the only path, man. It's the pragmatic way. It's the practical way. It shows you have common sense and we're the most educated ones. So listen, I mean, that's a lot of power in these three entities, man. I mean, come on. Come on, I mean, they're, and you know, I mentioned the, the keys and the petty criminal. These people are satanic level criminals. They're the ones that are too big to jail, but they're not too big to stick in an ethics rehabilitation center. Too big to fail, too, these banksters. That's the most uncapitalistic remark you could ever make, my friends. So. You know, I want people to understand, you know, the, 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 uh, the cosmic God-born nature of human freedom. You know, and how the money is just, you know, we've got to eventually wean ourselves off it, and we could. 
It'd be worth so much, it would be rendered irrelevant. Nobody cared about money anymore. And that's not what these top money, evil do money lovers want. They don't care about conscience. They want money. They'd trade their soul for money any day of the week. That's who's running the show. That's who's manipulating us. That's who's forced us all to carry keys around. And why guys like me talk the way I do. I mean, God knows I would love, I would love some cosmic event because I really think it's going to take that. Some, some mind-blowing, paranormal, supernatural, cosmic event. Okay? That's what we need. That's what I really, I don't know what else it's going to take. I don't know. I don't believe in a civil war. I don't believe vi violence never solves everything for long. You can say, well, here we are again. Here we are under slavery.